If you're looking to set up a home gym, it could be tough to know where to even start. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the setup that I've been using and kind of growing over the last 10 months or so and what I recommend you get. If you're looking to get set up for home workouts, I'm just about to do a back workout so I'll take you guys through a workout and we'll talk about the setup a little bit. Uh, one of the first things that I do almost every upper body day workout is stretch my shoulders and my chest out with overhead passes with one of these long like kind of medium resistance bands it pulls apart pretty easily but what it allows you to do is stretch back and you'll really feel it in the shoulders and the chest and what you kind of want to do is push out at the same time as you're doing these this kind of opens your chest up pulls your shoulder blades back a little bit repositions your repositions your re <laughs> reposition re <laughs> holy repositions your shoulders a little bit <laughs> and just kind of opens the chest up. I know on back day it seems kind of like oh you don't need to do that but it helps a lot. The more open you are, the more balanced you are, the better your workouts will be. And I always like to start with some dynamic stretches, finish with the static stretches. So I'll do like a round of these usually and then once my shoulders are a little warm I'll tighten up the grip and go over again. These are awesome. If you're doing any kind of pressing, I highly recommend doing band pullovers. The next kind of tool that I like to use, it's another band, and they come in different weights. Um, use them for different things. The next little warm up I like to do is just the outward shoulder rotation. So grab the band and just rotate the back of your palm outwards is kind of the cue. Keeping your elbow tucked, and you should feel this kind of in your shoulder blade area. Warms up your rotator cuff a little bit rear delt a little bit just gets that posterior chain moving and gets a little bit of blood in there it's not an exercise you don't need to go until it burns a lot i like to go just until the burn starts i'll do the same on the other arm and then we'll get into the next warm up back to these bands this is a heavier band this is one i use to warm up my rear delts i also count this as a rear delt exercise it's spider walks on the wall just come up here put a bit of tension on your hands and start walking them down. Now this is a great warm up for your shoulders in general and also for your rear delt. You can really get them working with this um, and just overall it'll strengthen your shoulders up quite a bit. I love them. I do them every single time. Great warm up, great workout as well. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just go back to this band. We're gonna do all of those warm ups again with a little bit more intensity. And the way I'm gonna do it with this band for the pullovers, just leave a little less slack and you can really feel that stretch. Once my shoulders are kind of starting to burn, I know I'm good. Usually 12 to 20 reps, somewhere in there. When I'm doing these, all I really do is four on each side, so I count to eight basically on the way down, eight on the way up. Do that twice, seems to be enough for a set. Okay, so warm up is complete. Got a little bit of a pump on the rear delts, which is great. Love to feel that before I go into my exercises. Now I'll show you guys what's happening with my layout, how I have my little gym area set up, and how much space it actually takes. Now I got these mats from Walmart, or I think they're about 30 or $40 each. I just got two of them. Pretty cost effective, really good for protecting the floor and keeping the sweat off the floor. Definitely recommend getting something like this. These ones are about six feet long by three feet wide, so they cover a pretty good area. You could definitely get away with just one if you needed to. And then basically I have my weights off to one side and then I have a little basket for all my accessories like bands and stuff like that. My bench attachments are at the back out of the way. That's pretty much it. It's a really simple setup. Keep going with the exercises here. Uh, we're gonna start with some rear delt exercises and I can show you guys what that looks like. First weighted exercise I'm gonna get into is gonna be some kind of rear delt fly or like a skier. I like to get it so that the bench is set up upright so I can put my head against it, eliminate some swing, and then all I do is like a light weight. Sometimes between that 15, 20, range depending on how many I can get. I'll do about three or four sets. 
let's get into it. I didn't even have a bench when I started. Don't feel like it's necessary. You can absolutely get away with a couch, maybe like a chair or something like that, as long as it's sturdy enough to support you and the weight you're working with. I went with a pretty heavy weight bench. I wanted it to be pretty high quality so it would last for a while. This is obviously York Barbell entry level commercial kind of bench. So this is something you'd find in a hotel. Pretty heavy duty steel, full incline declines to hit everything at the right angle. Okay, we got our first exercise for our rear delts down. I chose adjustable dumbbells primarily just to save on space and I guess money too. They're really quick and easy to change the weight on if you maybe feel like you're not heavy enough on your exercise. For example, in the rear delt flies I was just doing, wasn't really feeling it, had to up the weight, only took a second. They're great for that. They're a little bit clunkier, like bigger and uh, not quite as solid as traditional dumbbells. However, for the average person at home, if you're taking care of your equipment properly, I think they're just fine. They work for me, really not perfect, but nothing is. So really good option for you. I started with this style, the spin lock dumbbells. Good way to start, but obviously you run out of weight and the spin locks take a long time to switch weights up on. So eventually I sprung for 52 and a half pound Amazon specials. The only thing I would suggest, if you are serious about lifting, maybe you've already started, depending on your strength, I would spring for the 90 pounds first, if I could go back. I did end up buying the 90 pounds eventually, quite a bit pricier, saving that money on the initial investment of the 52s, putting it into the 90s would have probably been a good bet, because they do go down to 10 pounds. I'm not messing around with anything lighter than that, so, that would have been ideal. Hindsight obviously being 2020. If you're getting into fitness and you're committed, just go for the big guys. If you feel like you're gonna get up to that weight eventually. I didn't think I would, but after enough time training, here we are. So, <laughs> so definitely recommend going bigger sooner. And now another thing I like to use these bands for. I like to use these bands for my last rear delt exercise, which is just like a rear delt fly, but it's banded, constant tension, lower kind of range of motion, and it just pumps blood right into there. Great finishing move. I always train rear delts first, prioritize the body parts that you feel are maybe lagging or don't get enough attention if you do other body parts first. So just gonna do three sets of these band pull aparts and then that'll be it for rear delts. Now in that fit little fitness bin in the back corner there, you'll find a couple other things. Keep a yoga mat around anytime I need to do work on the floor. I don't necessarily have space where my bench is, so I keep the mat around just to stop sweat from getting into the carpet. <laughs> We got a couple of pairs of light weights, a hip thrust pad, which I don't really use, and lifting straps, which I also don't really use. I only have 90 pounds to work with in each hand. It's not too necessary. So I didn't even buy those. Those are my girls. I use that hip thrust pad. I used to like squat. I can't get enough weight on the bar we have here. It's not safely anyways. I can't get it up over my head, so I don't really do that anymore. I got a couple more things to show you. That's pretty much it. So we'll just carry on with the workout here. This right here has grown to be one of my favorite movements. It's basically like a chest supported row and you have the option of putting down the weights completely at the end of each rep. There's some kind of reflex that happens where you get a little bit more strength if you don't put down the dumbbells. So if you really want to push yourself, put down the dumbbells and it takes away that reflex and it takes that much more effort to pick the weights back up. And then basically I'll flare my arms like out and then once I can't get any more reps like that, I'll tuck them in and hit like the lower lat. Basically go to failure twice in each of these sets. So it's a really good workout. I'm gonna get hit one more set of those supported rows and then I'm gonna get into the one arm rows. Yeah, so one of the main reasons I had to go with the heavier dumbbells was leg movements and back movements. 52 and a half pounds, not enough. 20 plus reps per set. The workouts were just getting so long to get an effective stimulus that I decided it was worth the money to upgrade. And of course, 
You can always find ways to put those on payment plans so that it's not as much money coming out of your pocket at once. The weights and the bench are gonna be your biggest investments, but if you're not going to the gym, they will pay off. Oh my God, there's a tiny, tiny spider on the camera. Okay, I tried to get it off. This little spider is now hiding in my dead cat. I have like little fucking spider babies to take care of. All right, next up, we're gonna do another one of my favorites. I guess back day is just my favorite. It's gonna be the one-armed rows, one-armed rows. I use the bench to support my body a little bit, take the lower back out of it a little bit, and I go pretty heavy on these, really focusing on the upper lat. Let's get into that about halfway through our workout here. Now the way I like to set up for these, I have my bench on an angle here. Basically, one knee on the bench, give yourself kind of like a triangle with one arm or hand up on the back of the bench, get nice and stable. And then I'll do a couple dry runs just to squeeze the muscle, prime it, and then treat your hands like a hook. Don't pull with your hands, focus on pulling your elbow back. Pretend there's a string to the ceiling that's pulling your elbow up towards the ceiling. It's a little bit weird. Take some practice to understand exactly what that means, but once you do, I promise you'll feel your lats more than like your biceps, which shouldn't really be too involved in this. This is also why it's nice to have one of these incline-decline benches. So much you can do with them. This one has a spot for leg attachments as well, which I love. I love finishing legs with curls and extensions. Not necessary though. You can absolutely get one off of Amazon and make it work. Don't need to spend top dollar for your equipment. I like to do about nine or 10 sets per workout for each muscle group. I used to do a lot more. I had to drop my volume a little bit, just out of consideration for time. I've seen the same results, essentially, so I don't think it's hurting me at all. And in fact, I feel more ready for my next workout, which I think helps me put in a bit more effort, push my weights up a bit more frequently, which is something I was lacking when I was doing more volume, that's for sure. Okay, wrapped up with the one arm rows. I'm gonna go into some pullovers. Now, I like to use dumbbells most of the time, but once in a while, I do really like to use this next piece of equipment, which is going to be an easy bar. I got this one from Walmart. I think it was 40 or 50 bucks. I don't use it for too much. It's good for bicep curls. I really like the way the grip is when I do a pullover. It just feels really natural to me. Um, and you can load it up pretty good as well. I don't have enough plates, which is why I don't usually use it. And then just spring clamps, obviously. Safe sets is important. We're gonna get into some dumbbell pullovers. I don't know if this is a chest or lat exercise. I feel like it does a little bit of both which is why maybe there's still an agreement on, or disagreement on that. I use it for lats, that's just me. I do feel it in my chest a little bit, which I don't mind. Usually it's because I'm sore. I do pull a day the day before, so I maybe that's why I'm feeling it. But yeah, I, I try to squeeze my lats, like flare them, and then do the rep, which kind of helps with activation. Let's get into it. Now these pullovers can be a little sketchy to get into, which is why I don't really recommend them. As you can see, when I get the weight up, I have a little technique for it. Some of these angles are a little awkward. I like to do it where my shoulders are on the bench and I'm facing the other way. I can drop my hips a little bit more, which helps counterbalance the weight, stretches the lats out a bit more. Just gotta be careful getting the weight up. This one can hurt your shoulders. Don't ego lift on this one. Again, three sets, that brings us to nine working sets for back volume and then it's time to move on to biceps. Other pieces of equipment I'm not using in today's workout. The lockdown for legs which I use for a Bulgarian split squat. The leg extension slash hamstring curl attachment. Good to have. It's another added expense which is part of the reason why this bench was so expensive because it has that option, that like mounting point for it. Totally worth it in my opinion because I don't go to the gym often. Okay, so back is done. I'm gonna get into my bicep movements. I like to start with concentration curls. Just a really good isolation exercise for the biceps. I can get them 
primed for the next movement, really kind of pre-exhaust them. They're already worked from all the back movements just a little bit, but this really gives me the ability to develop the peaks. I like to use the spin lock dumbbells. I just like using the metal grips whenever I can. They're already preset for weight, so it's just nice and easy to pick up and get going. Let's get into it. So elbow on the inside of the leg. Your tricep should be touching your leg, not your elbow. And then I always do a couple dry runs just to get the muscle primed. And then use the dumbbell and your legs together. Really isolate that bicep. So I only do two exercises for biceps, so I'm gonna be doing four sets of each of those to finish my biceps off. And then we're pretty much done the workout. Last exercise for today's workout, other than we'll do a quick burnout. Cross body, hammer curls. Again, we're gonna do four sets. And on the last one, once I can't do cross body anymore, I'll just do hammer curls. A little bit of cheating, just to get those extra reps out and long negatives at the end, just so we can push past failure and get these biceps growing. <laughs> Once I'm not getting good reps in anymore, I just call it and then we'll go into our bent over supinated dumbbell rows just to finish it off. It'll get a little bit more rear delt, a little bit of back activation and finish off the biceps. For this last movement, I'm gonna be going moderately heavy, not too heavy. I wanna just get a nice little burn in on all the muscles we worked out today. I get the dumbbells up onto the bench first and then start rowing from there. All right guys, that's the video for today. That is my home gym setup and a quick workout to show you guys how I would use it to get gains at home. There's an unlimited combination of equipment and exercises you can use to get those results at home. This is just what I do. Uh, I don't have another video planned. I think the next one is a vlog. Check this video out. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.